when an ecosystem is changed by humans, it impacts the organisms that live in that ecosystem. When we build a town or cut down a forest, that affects the organisms that live in that area. It's also important to understand that the organisms in an ecosystem are connected. When you decrease one population, that can negatively affect other populations. So farmers exterminate prairie dogs because they damage their crops. But why does this hurt the black-footed ferret population? Well, that's because black-footed ferrets prey on prairie dogs, and reducing a population of organisms also harms its predators. When the farmers exterminate the prairie dogs, they're taking away the black-footed ferret's food, and that causes the black-footed ferret population to decrease. Overfishing is another example of how reducing a population of organisms also harms its predators. Overfishing reduces the food available to sharks, and this causes the shark population to decline. Removing the producers from an ecosystem harms all the consumers in an ecosystem. So if I cut down all the oak trees in this ecosystem, that means that there's no food or shelter for insects, mice, or squirrels. So all of the insects, mice, and squirrels that use the oak tree as a food source are going to have to leave or they'll die. But because all of the insects, mice, and squirrels are gone, that means that there's no longer any food for skunks, owls, and hawks. So you can see that by taking away the producers, I've caused a domino effect that causes all of the consumers to either have to leave to find food elsewhere or die. So we've been talking about what happens when we take away an organism's food source, but it's also true that when an organism's food source increases, so does its population. Squirrel populations are larger in years when trees produce more nuts. That's because they have more food, and so more squirrels can survive because there's more food for all of them to eat. So another way that humans can actually harm organisms is by taking away their habitat. So removing an organism's habitat will reduce its population size. And here you see that these trees have been chopped down and deforestation is a huge problem that really harms these forest ecosystems. And here you can see a highway being built and this highway is being built through a forest. And this reduces the population of animals in the area because their habitat and their food source for many of them are being taken away. But increasing habitats can help populations increase in size. And here you see two examples of man-made artificial reefs. And artificial reefs can support marine food webs. And this helps increase the populations of marine organisms. Introducing a new species into an ecosystem can harm native organisms. Kudzu vines were introduced into this ecosystem, and kudzu vines grow quickly and can completely cover native plants. And that kills the native plants that they cover and reduces the population of plants in this ecosystem. When a new animal is introduced, it competes with native animals for food. Wild hogs are a big problem in Texas, Wild hogs were brought from other countries and compete with native organisms for food. When animals feed on grasses and other plants, we call it grazing. Overgrazing removes too many plants. And in this picture, you can actually see the effects of overgrazing. So animals on this side of the fence have been allowed to eat too many of the plants. And now you can see that they're mostly gone and that can create some pretty big problems in this ecosystem. 24 rabbits were released in Australia in 1859. And today, millions of rabbits can be found in Australia. Overgrazing by rabbits harms other herbivores and leads to serious issues caused by erosion. So other herbivores no longer have the plants they need for food because the rabbits are overgrazing and the roots of plants actually hold on to soil. 
So when the rabbits eat all of the plants that are holding onto the soil, those plants die and that soil can be washed away. And that can create big problems as the soil erodes. So I hope this video has helped you understand how changes to ecosystems can affect populations of organisms. Keep up the great work and I'll see you next time.